You've seen that at the start of YouTube videos, and you've probably heard it has something to do with sync sound. But what is this all about? How does this even work? And why do we even bother? I mean, almost every camera today can record sound and video all in one package. And even if you use a separate audio recorder, well, nearly every modern NLE can sync up an audio track using just the waveform, no clap necessary. So why even bother clapping? What's up everybody, I'm Jason, and welcome back to some more tips and tricks. So today, we're going to go back to basics, and by that I mean we're going to go back and look at the oldest and simplest way to synchronize sound and video. And specifically, that ends up taking us to that question of what's up with all the clapping? In fact, not only am I talking about this, but just to keep in the spirit of this video, I'm actually not recording sound on any of my cameras. So I will be using this same process that I'm about to describe to actually synchronize the sound and video for this video as well. Now, my inspiration for doing this was a recent gaffe that had me going back to these techniques to save some footage with all the slick capabilities of modern waveform matching in just about every NLE, quite honestly, I figured I'd never need to worry about manually syncing sound. However, I'm also a big believer that if you can do something simple and easy to back up the technology, well, you probably should. Which is why, since I shoot two system audio, I clap at the start of every video. Uh, just in case I do something boneheaded like I did in that recent footage and say forget to enable audio recording on my camera. So let's look at clapping our way to synchronized audio and let's start by looking at how and why this actually works. Now the mechanics here are really simple. We just need a short sharp sound. Now, when you look at this in a waveform, it becomes easy to spot because it's a big, tall, narrow peak. And more importantly, it's a precise reference because, well, it is just a big, tall, narrow peak. Secondly, we need something visual to make that sound. And this process also needs to be precise in the video side of things. Now, that said, you can sync sound with just about anything, even talking, but doing so is much harder and much less precise than having a actual clap or very short impulse. Now, if you're familiar with the history of cinematography, then this whole process was and still is par for the course. It really wasn't until maybe 20, 30, even 40 at the most years ago that what we take for granted, having integrated audio and video recording all in one package, really became a thing. For a significant portion of the history of filmmaking, audio and video were entirely separate processes that really only came together in post-production. Now, of course, digital recording makes this all not only practical, but really easy to include and basically every camera since we've had the capability of doing digital stuff has had some way of cap recording sound. Now historically this process has also been part of a generate or the process of generating these synchronization signals it has also been part of a larger what you could call metadata or tagging process and that's also still used today in larger productions. Now, if you're interested, I'm going to be talking about slating in some up and coming videos. And no, I'm not going to be telling you how to do it. Uh, that's not something I'm specifically qualified to do. I'm going to be tearing it apart and rebuilding it as a tool that can be useful for small content creators like me. Now that we know how this all works, the next question is, well, when do you actually need to clap and when don't you? Now, since the entire point of this process is to sync the sound and video when they've been recorded separately, uh, the answer is simple. If you aren't recording separate audio, clapping is pointless. Now, on the other hand, if you do record separate audio, then clapping is appropriate. And again, odds are probably good that you're going to use waveform sync or maybe even timecode sync, which doesn't require a clap, but having that clap or the slate is a solid backup. Now for me, 
The clap, if there's a separate sound recording device philosophy, applies anytime there are, there are separate audio recording being done, even if those separate recorders are just backups to whatever's being done primarily. So this includes things like Rode's Wireless Go 2 and Wireless Pro microphones, as well as DJI's wireless microphones, which you know both transmit to a remote receiver that's usually hooked up to your camera, but they also record a backup copy on that device. Additionally, this also would apply to a standalone recorder, for example, Tentacles Track E, which does time code sync, but is a standalone recorder. Or even if you use your smartphone with a lav microphone plugged into it, and quite honestly, if you're new to all of this, that's not really a bad solution if you're starting out and working on a budget or just need an extra microphone. So once you know when to clap, the question then is, how do you go about doing it? Do you just clap? I mean, is it really that simple? Well, uh, not quite. There is a tiny bit of finesse to this. So this is the procedure I use. First, I start my recording on my audio recorder and then my cameras. Technically, the order you start recording doesn't matter at all. But audio files are much smaller than video files. And if your camera, like my R5, has a recording limit, then starting the audio recording first buys me a couple of extra seconds of recording time that may actually be useful. Next, make sure that you place your hands so that they're visible in the frame for the camera or cameras that you're shooting with. Now, this is, is helped with an articulating screen or a separate monitor, uh, but you can usually get close enough just by you know, putting your hands clearly in front of the lens between where the lens and the subject is. Then clap once with the intent to produce a single sharp, clean sound. It want, you want it to be loud, you want it to be a single peak, you don't want to mess around, and you don't need to clap five or six or eight or ten times or pretend you're a drummer. Now, if there are other camera angles that don't allow me to get my hands in the frame for a single clap, so for example, if I have my A camera set up like this A camera, but my B camera is instead, say, pointed down at a table, then I will reframe my hands and repeat the clap for the second cameras, the or the cameras, all of the cameras, if there's more than one, uh, that missed the first clap. Now, you will need to remember which clap you use to sync which camera, which is why I always start with the A camera and then move to the other cameras in sequence. You could also just call that out and say A camera and then clap, B camera and then clap and so on, uh, so that you have a record of what you're looking for in the audio files. Now remember, you need to be able to see the clap and hear the clap in both the video and audio. If you can't see it, you can't hear it sync up the sound to it. Now once I've got my footage and audio recorded, it's time to sync them up in my NLE of choice. Now, since I use DaVinci Resolve, that's what I'm gonna show here. However, while the details will obviously differ if you use Final Cut Pro or uh, Adobe Premiere or whatever, the overall procedure is going to be similar, at least in the broad strokes. So kind of pay attention to the thought process, not necessarily the exact steps if you're not a DaVinci Resolve user. Now, of course, this is where I and you probably would normally use waveform sync, but again, for this video, I deliberately disabled audio on my cameras, so it's all manual sync all the way for this. Now, technically, you can manual sync audio in either the media page or the timeline. However, if you do this in the timeline and not Resolve's media page, then the camera or the software doesn't actually link the files together. In the media page, when you link the two, they actually are combined into sort of one big package, and that file will work everywhere with that audio just as if that was what was recorded in the original file or included in the file. So to start this process, we're going to switch to the media page in Resolve. Then, once we're there, we need to do a quick little bit of setup to make sure that things are working. So first, we're going to make sure that the audio sidebar is enabled by clicking the audio up at the top in the toolbar. And then we're going to set the audio sidebar to waveform view by clicking where it says waveform. Then we'll open our video file from the media browser by double clicking it. Here, we'll find which frame we have where our hands come together for the clap, and we'll move the playhead to that position. 
Now this is being done in the main viewer. Then we'll open up the audio file. Again, we do this by double clicking it in the media browser. Only this time, we're not going to work in the main viewer. We're going to work in the waveform viewer on the sidebar. So here again, we'll move the playhead until it lines up with the leading edge of the clap's spike. So we have what was in the video is the clap coming together and in the playback or the, the audio track in the waveform, we have the clap's spike. Now finally, at the bottom of the waveform viewer in the audio sidebar, you'll see a little chain link icon. Just click that and the audio file will now be linked to the video file and synced up properly. Now, you may find that you can't line things up perfectly doing it this way. And that's quite honestly because uh, Resolve moves the playhead in what amount to video frames, not much finer audio samples. However, this is actually not as big of a problem as it might sound like. If you can't things li line things up perfectly, then what you want to do is ensure that the sound lags behind the image. So you have your clap sound, say, a frame or two after the actual clap is seen. Typically, a frame is what you want to aim for. Now, this works because our brains naturally deal with this all the time, as this is how sound and light work in the real world. So, for example, if you were standing 20 feet or 6 meters away from someone, it would take more than 16.67 milliseconds for that person's voice to reach your ears, but the audio or the, the visual image, the light would happen in something like 20 nanoseconds, so almost instantaneously. Now, 16.67 there is an important number, as that's one frame at 60 frames per second. So basically, just videoing somebody at 20 feet, you should expect the sound to be delayed by at least one frame per second if you're shooting at 60 frames a second. Now that said, if you need to fine tune things further, you'll have to do that in the timeline view. There you can shift the audio track in one tenth of a frame increments. And to do this, you select the audio and video track that you want to adjust. Then you hold the Alt key and you press the left or right arrows to slip the audio track backwards or forwards respectively. As the audio track moves, you'll see a red plus or minus time tag appear on both the video and audio track so that indicates that they're not quite synced up. Once the audio and video tracks are synced up, you can drop that video track in any timeline anywhere in Resolve. Again, doing it in the media form or media page. You can also use these files in multicam timelines and even use the waveform sync in the multicam timeline to synchronize the multiple camera angles. Anything that Resolve does will work with this audio and video as if it was just one process. So, that's how, when, and why you clap at the start of a video and how to use that to manually sync the audio tracks in DaVinci Resolve. Now, hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. Also, if you'd like to directly support this channel and future content like this, please consider hitting that thanks button. The help is always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.